Biomedical equipment technicians are technicians that repair, inspect, calibrate, and perform services on medical equipment devices. We work on every piece of equipment in the medical facility. That ranges from thermometers, blood pressure cuffs, to x-rays, dental chairs, lab equipment items, such as analyzers, laboratory hoods. We make sure that they are with intolerance and we follow the manufacturer's literature guidances to make sure that they are fully functional and ready for patient use. Any medical equipment we touch, it, it helps other people. It can be a AED, which is across the base. It could be a, uh, a respirator unit that's not here, but it's being taken home with the patient. If we don't do our job and a piece of equipment goes down or it, it gives off misreading, that could be someone's career. It could be someone's health. It could be someone's ability to even work in a different area. So my favorite part about being a BMET is actually repairing equipment. When the unit is down and you need it up, you're somehow able to bring it back up, it's a good feeling knowing that, hey, I just fixed this equipment that's going to save someone's life. I'm Trevor Lee, Senior Airman, Biomedical Equipment Technician at David Grant Medical Center. Uh, I've been, uh, here, been here two years. Um, I like my job because it's different every day. There's a humongous amount of equipment in this hospital and it's all different. So every day is a challenge and something new to learn. So if it's something big, a lot of the time with how fancy these things are and how intricate the users have to be with how they use them. Yeah. Hey, look, it's my stuff. Honestly, tell them to turn it off and on again, just to start. <laughs> because a lot of the time, it's like your computer, when anything goes wrong, just turn it off and on again. It's the sort of, sometimes that helps. The go-to is getting the users to recreate the issue. Because if I can't see the problem, I can't fix it. So having the person who saw the issue there with you when you go look at it helps a lot. I got a call from the anesthesia technician that one of the anesthesia units wasn't working at all. It was ventilating the patient, but it wasn't showing any of their waveforms to show all of the different statistics that they need to make sure that the patient's breathing properly. And was as simple as replacing a flow sensor that with the COVID patients, they're using a lot of really thick drugs in the lungs. And those drugs are going in these tiny little flow sensors that are very delicate and clogging up the tiny little wire that measures the flow. And so consistently with all the, you know, with COVID patients specifically, they have to change out these sensors all the time. And it's kind of difficult to see when it's happening that, that's a, that, that it's that simple of an issue, a problem to change. That little tiny spring, you probably can't even see it. One of the things is you don't know what you're gonna get. That's the only issue with this whole thing you know, go there now, it's urgent sort of thing, or if it's, uh, okay, well, this can wait till tomorrow. You just don't know. Definitely communication is key. Uh, we, uh, the, the doctors and the nurses and the technicians in the hospital are our customers. So customer service is, you know, paramount. Today we have two pieces of very important equipment. Uh, one is an infusion pump with a built-in warmer fluid warmer, and then we have an AED, uh, which I say those are the most important pieces of equipment we have on the base. The most important. Uh, would you like to take a look at our preventive maintenance on them? Would I? Connor, let's do that. All right, let's do that. Chief, questions so far? <laughs> I do. So how do you know when you get the batteries reinstalled and it's all ready to go, do you try it out on yourself? Oh, no. Just the shock, or is so, that something I would do as a cop probably just that's to That's when we work? invite Sergeant Diaz down. So, so actually, before, uh, before we send them back out, this is the machine right here. It's called the DFib Analyzer. This is going to send a shock to it, and it's ah. going to measure the joules. So pretty much we're just going to take the unit, and we're going to do a physical inspection. So this is going to be when we actually look at the pads. This okay. is what connects to the patient. Now we're going to check... It on uh, and off and verify the green check indicates ready for use. All right. All right, so now we can turn it off because we're going to check the batteries. Pull it up. Whoa. We don't need to take any out. We just need okay. to make sure that they're not expired. So How all these you... batteries, they have March 2024. Oh, 24. Verified. All right, perfect. All batteries are up to date. So this is an infusion pump. Pretty much uh, whenever a patient is hooked up to a ventilator, sometimes they need to be uh, sedated and put into a coma. And this is going to make sure that they keep 
the fluids they need because they're not going to be able to drink. So we're going to have to introduce the fluids ah, for them. Gotcha. So let's jump right into this guy. If you want to do the honors. You're going to do it. Here, I'll hold it for you. You pour. I break a lot of stuff so people can drink. Now, this is going to be when we start to measure the delivered amount of fluid. It's going to just stay in one spot, the laser. And as that tape rolls around, it's going to hit it, okay. and it's going to reflect it back to there, and it's going to tell you exactly how many RPMs you get. So we have a tolerance of plus or minus 50 milliliters. Yeah, so right we're way inside that. So to get back here and see what you're doing, yeah. to walk through in, in such a precise manner to show detail by detail, that's, that's professionalism, dude. Thank and you. 